Hello, in this video we're going to solve objective 10 of the 2020 Vaughn Sense Holiday Hack Challenges and uh, this one is um, going to kind of combine together the terminal challenge uh, with the objective. Uh, it will become uh, significantly easier to solve the challenge for the objective if you do the terminal challenge that gives you the hint and also walks you through some important concepts that later you will use in the uh, challenge, the objective challenge. So uh, let's get right into it. And we are back in the game uh, looking at uh, the list of objectives. The one that we're going to work on is called Now Hiring. As you can see, this is a mid-level challenge. Um, free Christmas trees uh, for the difficulty level. And it says, what is the secret access key for the Jack Frost Tower job application server? Free the pearls of Jack's bathroom to... <laughs> Uh, get hints from Noxius Odor. <laughs> oh, oh, this is um, I, this is the first time I, I get the pun for the name. All right, so um, we need to visit Jack Frost's bathroom where we had the golden uh, toilet seat, and um, we're going to solve the uh, the hints challenge first. Afterwards, we need to do um, uh, a web application assessment and. Uh, uh, exploit a vulnerability there. Uh, so let's travel and we're going straight to Jack's restroom where we have the troll waiting for us with a uh, terminal. Oh, let me just position myself so we can read all the chat bubbles here like this. So it says, hey, uh, this is the executive restroom, wasn't that door closed? Well, no, it wasn't, I just walked straight through it. Noxious odor, uh, and I've got to say, I think the Jack Frost is just messed up. Wow, that's, um, I, I don't remember <laughs> this conversation. I mean, I'm not an expert, but it's a part to win against and that is going to, going big and border seems bad. You know, I'm having some trouble with IMDS exploitation. I'm hoping you can give me some help in solving it. If you do, I would be happy to trade you some hints for uh, server side because forgery. I've been uh, studying it. Wow, this was too fast for me. Anyways, the point is that here uh, we're going to look at um, IMDS uh, and then the application. So it's um, a cloud related. Uh, thing as you will see it with the terminal challenge and then uh, the application uh, is sort of a, a maybe being a, a cloud-based application so uh, straight out from the the challenge here uh, we're going to be armed with the knowledge that we need to exploit the server side request forgery for the application uh, and that's pretty much it that's the the whole point here all right so let's start up the terminal here and this terminal challenge, uh, we'll see if it's stable enough, looks good, uh, is going to teach us about instance metadata service or IMDS. This is uh, a metadata service that uh, you can see in basically in all the free major cloud application providers. So this is presenting AWS, Azure, and also Google Cloud Platform. And it's, it's a special IP range that from a virtual instance, uh, potentially you can access and query the metadata stored. And it has the, the potential to disclose very sensitive information as we'll see. So let's uh, get started. And I believe um, a very similar lab is in the SANS uh, 504 class uh, that just made it there. So this uh, might be some sort of part of this, but it's a really uh, fun and interesting uh, challenge. So let's answer with a Y and uh, read the messages. So um, yeah, so here the terminal uh, also explains virtual server for cloud assets uh, at the IP address. And this is the, the special IP. Uh, send a couple ping packets to the server. I wonder if I can copy this one. Um, so we're going to do ping and okay excellent I can copy and paste here so let's send a few ping packets here and um, MDS uh, provides information about 
currently running virtual machine instances. You can use it to manage and configure cloud nodes and is used by all major cloud providers, like I mentioned, run next to continue. All right, so let's continue. And this terminal kind of just walks you through the concept, so it tells you what you need to do. You will see, uh, I will make a bonus video of the uh, Log4j or Log4j uh, terminals as well. They're pretty much the same, while the, the offensive side one, uh, the red teamer side one, uh, is more just following the steps uh, that are detailed down in the uh, gist. But the blue team one is pretty much the same as this one. So developers can automate actions using MBS. We will uh, interact with the server using the curl tool. Run this command to access the IMDS data. Uh, and different providers will have different formats for IMDS data. We're using an AWS compatible IMDS server that returns a latest <clears throat> as a default response, access to the latest endpoint, run, with the slash latest. I'll just clear up the terminal here. The dynamic and metadata being returned. Two new endpoints, dynamic and metadata. Let's start with the dynamic endpoint, which provides information about the instance itself. Repeat the uh, request to access the dynamic endpoint. Do this. Paste it. Instance. Uh, identity document can be used by developers to understand the instance details repeat the request this time requesting instance identity slash document resource we're just going to query metadata about this instance that we're, we're currently interacting with and much of the data uh received i wonder oh, okay there's, there's the closing bracket for the json um will be shown JavaScript object notation or JSON format. Piping the output to JQ will make the content easier to read. JQ is a fantastic tool. Um, we are on the previous command and okay, we just need to pipe it to JQ. And if you just pipe it to JQ, it will uh, just do fancy coloring for us. But JQ is uh, a really powerful manipulation tool to, um, to interact with JSON data. You can do uh, uh, selections, to some extent filtering, but um, I don't want to go into too much details why that's a bad idea, probably it's not very efficient. And uh, can also do transformations on the data so we can call uh, certain functions uh, to convert, for example, Unix uh, epoch format to human readable one with an update command and um, all sorts of fun things. It's a really useful tool, especially if you do, for example, uh, analysis on log files. Today, they're very often going to be in JSON format. So as you can see now, it's uh, pretty printed and we see several details about an instance when it was launched. Developers can use this information to optimize applications based on its launch parameters uh, next to continue. In addition, dynamic parameters uh, set at launch. Uh, IMDS uh, offers metadata about instance as well. Seven metadata elements uh, available. Let's paste it here clean this one up and we get a bunch of different endpoints whoops I'm not even able to scroll back excellent metadata and those developers can interrogate information about the system this is where the juicy parts uh, starts and uh, take a look at the public hosting element Let's take this one paste it and I'm going to just clean up things Many of the data elements returned won't include a training new line, which totally drives me crazy. Uh, causes a response blend into the prompt. Rerun the prior command, adding semicolon equal. So we're just echoing the new line here, and it looks much nicer. There's a whole lot of information that can be retrieved from the IMDS server, even AWS MT Access Management credentials. Mm, requires the endpoint security credentials to see the instance IAM role. Um, oops, yeah, with, with curl. That's important. Once you know the role name, you can request and again, you know, new line return. 
uh, AWS keys associated with the role request the endpoint. So now we have the uh, role name here returned, kind of ugly, but I'm just gonna repeat this just for readability. <laughs> this is terrible. So anyway, we, we have this one here um, for the role name and we can run curl. This is pretty interesting, by the way, why, why they don't have the, the curl commands there. Um, oh, okay. I think, yeah, the role was missing here. Uh, role. Much better. So far, we've been interacting with the uh, MTS server using uh, version 1, which doesn't require authentication option only. AWS users can turn on version 2 that requires authentication, which after all this probably seems like a good idea. It's more secure, but not on by default. Run next to continue. Alright. For version 2 access, you must request a token from the MDS server using the... Um, this is a pretty long header, I'm not going to read it. Uh, indicate how long you want the token to be used between 1 and 21,600 seconds, examine the contents of cat token sh um, by using cat. Apparently there's a script here. And um, all right, so this is just the uh, command um, to request a new token and we're going to store it in an environment variable. Um, put it down, environment variable, import it into your environment running source that token sh boom check it with echo token um, that's not a bad command like this with the token you can make uh, now version 2 request adding the uh, header to the request access metadata uh, region information uh, in an MDSV2 request using this command here. Instead, uh, try to fix this new line here. This line break uh, made it into there for some reason. And I also have here the single quote at the beginning. I think it looks good. Congratulations, you have completed the lesson on instance metadata interaction. Run exit to close, and we have the achievement here. So that's um, everything that we really needed to do uh, for the terminal part. We just jump to the the objective challenge here. Um, most of the uh, the actual objective solution. Uh, is, is going to be just getting through this and understand how you might be able to potentially access uh, uh, the, um, the AWS uh, uh, secret because of the end goal for the objective. So I can exit here, close it, look at my achievement. There it is. And I'm going to talk to the troll now just to get, I think, a couple of hints, maybe just one. Pew, um, there's something extra. Oh, uh, and you saw the challenge too. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Cloud assets are uh, interesting targets for attackers. Do you know the ultimate and the access? Very concerned about the combination of uh, server side request function and MDS access. Uh, did you know it's possible to harvest cloud keys through server side request forgery and uh, MDS access? But the petabyte told us anytime you see URL as an input test for a server side request forgery with a server side request forgery attack, you can make the server request a URL. This can reveal valuable data. Um, and then there's a documentation uh, for AWS. And that's it. So now that I uh, went through this uh, nice and slow, I realized that I should have listened to the troll. <laughs> Uh, it spares you a, a lot of headache and a lot of poking around. Uh, the the hint that we get is after solving uh, the terminal challenge is probably not super interesting. Uh, I also forgot the name. 
um, is the uh, AWS and the documentation. So that's it. And this is really just pointing to the the um, AWS documentation here. But we already we already saw uh, these URLs and how to interact with them. Uh, so after solving the challenge, it, it doesn't have quick value. But we'll keep it um, put it uh, aside and then go to the objective. And for this one, because we will have to download uh, files, I'm going to uh, use the, the Cal VM again, just making it easier for me. This is the nice uh, website. This one doesn't even require to use uh, Burp Suite or any other kind of uh, proxy. We can just go straight to uh, a browser and look at the content. So there's a job application part here. There are also job opportunities listed out and everything here really just leads to the apply form. I wonder if we even need to fill this one out. Um, so there is a URL um, to um, publish your NLBI report, which is the Naughty List Background Investigation. And this means that we, we upload this and someone or something might potentially fetch that one. And what we're going to do is using our knowledge, uh, we're going to use the IMDS uh, service because all the hints pointed towards that one, but yeah, you can give it a try and try other things with this application. I don't think there's any other interesting vulnerabilities. And uh, we're just going to submit this uh, I think that's all you need to do, invalid name input. Okay, so apparently you, you really need to fill in the details. Um, okay, let's call this test, and address test at test.com, phone number. Hopefully there's no input validation or no serious input validation here. Resume, uh, you can also try to upload files, but uh, I think most times this will just fail and your, your request will not be successful. And this one says submission accepted. Um, and uh, just check. Um, we, um, I mean, we might have to upload a file here. Um, we'll see. Let me just check the View selection source, uh, no, not this one. Yeah, I, I think if I remember correctly, we're gonna need a, like a JPEG kind of file or something like that. Well, this will test the JPG, so we might be in luck. So that means that if I go to images, I'm gonna put this one aside for later use. It's gonna be displayed because it contains errors. Um, then do a uh, uh, inspect element. It's not something I want. I think I used. Um, I think I used uh, Chromium. For, for solving this challenge, but it's okay. I will uh, but we're going to we're going to manage this. So I, I basically what I want to do is just save this file, which is not an actual JPEG image. It's just something that was generated, but I, I didn't upload anything here. Uh, the application is a little bit broken. And uh, if I look at the content of the file, so this would be this would be fetching that that naughty list thingy, um, and, and it will put a reference here, which means that uh, the application does this uh, fully automated. So we give a URL to the application, it goes out, fetches it, and tries to display. That, that fetch data from the remote server, uh, which is 
basically server-side request forgery here. And interestingly, the content for the file that was displayed, which was not a JPEG image, um, is uh, the um, the response returned by the IMDS service. So we know that this application is vulnerable to server-side request forgery, and we can use uh, the endpoints that we saw earlier from the IMDS service to get to the um, to the uh, the secrets. And next step that we need to do is uh, go and fill in an application form again. I'll try to remember how to get to the view source part. That's that's pretty important. Um, put the same thing here. Not sure which one is required, so I'm just randomly uh, trying to get them. And in this case, we are going after to, to get the role. If you remember back what the terminal challenge, first we had to get the role name and then we were able to get the uh, uh, the secret. Mission accepted. Let's try to do a few paid source here. Yeah, this seems to be the uh, well, proper way of doing it. All right, save so this other file as well. Open with mouse pad. And this is the jf-deploy-role, all right. This was the last piece that we needed to do the final step of the exploitation uh, test phone number. Maybe I shouldn't put my actual phone number here. Just kidding. Uh, so let's do the last submission, you pay source. Save this file, and like we saw it in the terminal challenge, this will give us the secret access key, and I believe this is all that we need to solve oh, the challenge. We can go uh, way, way, way back um, and close this. Beat the timeout part and go to the objective. It's in the secret access key. Minute and there it is. And we unlock a new narrative. So let's check out of the next uh, two lines here. I think every time uh, we progress with the narrative, we get two lines. So misdirected, scheming, gasping, frost intends to seize the day. Finding research with a gift shop can first build the better slate. All right, so uh, we also have our achievement here, server side request forgery to MDS, to S3 bucket access. I think we, we haven't got the last part, but uh, still, uh, this was a fun little uh, objective. So I really enjoyed the fact that uh, this was um, a lighter challenge. I don't think anyone solved the objectives sequentially. Probably you just looked at the difficulty levels and uh, picked the easiest ones first. Uh, this was fairly guided and um, the terminal challenge uh, gave the knowledge that was required uh, to solve the objective challenge, which I really enjoyed. I think this is a great structure that first you uh, have um, some playful and nice way to learn about a given topic and then apply it uh, in a, a realistic scenario. So pretty fun one, uh, but this was uh, pretty short compared to the, the other uh, objectives. Next up is Objective 11, which if I remember correctly, uh, will be some pickup analysis and uh, some uh, really, really funny jokes in there, some, uh, some really cool puns. So um, make sure that you check that video as well.